Thank you for tuning in to one of our webinar series, Carbohydrate, What You Need to Know. My name is Michelle Tong and I'm an accredited practicing dietitian and a credentialed diabetes educator. As the webinar title suggests, in the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be delving into the details of carbohydrates. And by the end of the session, hopefully, you'll be able to identify what are carbohydrates, whether all carbohydrates are created equal, what are the benefits of having carbohydrates, and identifying the carbohydrate sources in your diet. So let's talk about what are carbohydrates. When you think of the word carbohydrates, the first image that might pop into your head may be a bowl of pasta or rice. And you are right. However, there are many other foods that contain carbohydrate that may not be as obvious. Now, before we delve into the details, let's look at what are carbohydrates and why it is important for us to recognize these foods when we're living with diabetes. Now, foods we eat contain macronutrients that provide energy and other nutrients the body needs. Now, most of the macronutrients in food fall into three major groups. You've got your proteins, your fats, as well as your carbohydrates. Now, out of the three, we'll be focusing on carbohydrates today. And in the next slide, we'll talk about what actually happens in our body when we eat carbohydrate-rich foods. So carbohydrates are found in a wide array of foods. When you eat carbohydrate-rich foods, your body breaks it down into glucose in your digestive tract. So for example, if you had a slice of bread, your body breaks that down and turns it into glucose. Now the diagram here shows that glucose is represented by the white cubes as you can see where my cursor is. Now these glucose, after it gets broken down in the stomach, it then gets absorbed into the bloodstream, raising your blood glucose levels. Now glucose is used by the body's cells for energy, such as your brain and also your muscles. So as you can see here, once those glucose enter into the blood vessels, they travel to different parts of the body and then they get supplied uh, as a source of energy to your muscles. This is why carbohydrates are an important source of fuel for your body and powers all our bodily function and daily activity. Did you know that glucose is the preferred source of energy for our brain and actually uses almost 50% of the carbohydrate we eat? Now, we hear a lot about carbohydrates and there are many mixed messages out there. Now, although we know they are important for our body to function properly. However, not all carbohydrates are actually created equal. Many believe carbohydrates in general are bad, but it is the quality of the carbohydrate that is important for us to consider, where some types of carbohydrate-rich foods are actually better than others. Now, we can view the carbohydrates in two categories. We've got the healthiest sources of carbohydrates, which are either unprocessed or minimally processed. They are also a major source of dietary fiber, which actually slows down the rate of the glucose getting into your blood. Now, these foods include your whole grain, your vegetables, your fruits, um, your lentils, as well as your legumes. While on the other hand, We've also got the less healthy carbohydrates, which are often highly processed or refined foods, containing high amounts of added sugar and have been stripped off their fiber content. Now this causes your blood glucose to spike and then shortly after your glucose crashes. Now this may ultimately make you feel hungrier sooner, leading you to eat more foods than what your body may require which may result in unwanted weight gain. So some examples of foods in this group includes your white bread, your bare pastries, your soft drink, or your cordial. Now let's compare these two examples. We have got a slice of chocolate cake with no icing on the left, while on the right we have a medium-sized apple. 
Now they're both carbohydrates, but have very different nutrition profile. Now, although both foods are grouped as carbohydrate rich foods, and many might say they're both high in sugar, but if you take a closer look, they're actually quite different. On the left, we've the slice of chocolate cake with no icing, which is about 130 gram. It not only has more carbohydrate compared to similar weight of an apple, which is equivalent to a medium size or a fifth size, um, about half of the carbohydrate in the cake are added sugar, which is about 25 grams, as you can see here, compared to those in the apple, which is about 15 gram, of which are also natural sources of sugar known as fructose. Now, this natural sugar actually gets broken down in your stomach slower, meaning it also affects your blood glucose levels at a slower rate. Now, the total carb carbohydrate of the cake would give a higher blood glucose spike compared to the apples too. Now, on top of that, the fiber content in the cake is actually quite minimal, as you can see, about one gram compared to that of an apple, which is about 3.3 gram. And not only that, the apple also is a rich source of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants compared to that of the chocolate cake. So based on what we were talking about regarding the two categories of carbohydrates, on the left is what we just referred to in the last slide as less healthy carbohydrates compared to healthier sources of carbohydrate-rich foods on the right. Now, we will go through in more details later what exactly are carbohydrate foods, but in general, carbohydrate-rich foods are, say, your whole grains, some dairy, starchy vegetables, and also your fruits. Now, before I dwell further into the details of what exactly are carbohydrate-rich foods, thought I would explain what are the benefits of having healthier sources of carbohydrates. Now, many people believe having less or no carbohydrates may not be a problem. However, since carbohydrate-rich foods cover a large array of foods, it provides a variety of nutrients that you might not actually be aware of. So let's take a closer look. Now, one of the nutrients commonly found in these carbohydrate-rich foods, like your whole grains, are actually your good fats, such as what you might hear as unsaturated fats. Now, they not only help the absorption of vitamins and minerals, but they also help maintain our cholesterol levels and keep our skin healthy. Another important nutrient found in carbohydrate-rich foods are your vitamins. It can provide us with B vitamins, which are important for our metabolism. So helping your body break down food and converting it to energy. Carbohydrates also provide vitamin E, which helps maintain healthy skin and eyes and strengthen the body's natural defense against illness and infection. It also provides vitamin C, which helps protect cells, maintain blood vessels, bones and cartilage, as well as wound healing. Now, some carbohydrate rich foods are also high in minerals, such as your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains, and your dairy. Now, zinc helps make new cells and process our food. These are often found in your beans and your whole grains. You've also got your magnesium, which helps strengthen bones and maintain muscle health. Often magnesium can be found in your nuts, your oatmeal, your soy milk. You've also got your calcium, which actually helps strengthen your bones and your teeth. It also regulates uh, your muscle contractions, such as your heartbeat. Now, calcium are usually found in your carbohydrate-rich foods, such as your milk, as well as your yogurt. Some carbohydrate-rich foods are also high in fibre. It aids digestion, help you feel fuller, and keep your blood glucose and blood cholesterol levels in check, which can keep your heart healthy. Now, as you are aware, 
when you are living with diabetes, we have a three to four times higher risk of developing heart problems. So having adequate fiber in your diet will play a big part in delaying or preventing diabetes related complications, such as your heart problems. Now, fiber also helps reduce your blood pressure, maintain our blood glucose levels, keeping our bowels healthy, as well as providing us with healthier gut bacteria, or what you now commonly hear as microbiome. Now, some types of fiber actually also help slow glucose absorption, and higher fiber diet is also related to lowering some uh, cancers as well. So another nutrient found in carbohydrate rich foods are your antioxidants. And I'm sure many of you would have heard before. These help protect against cell damage that free radicals cause, which can be due to many lifestyle factors, you know, such as your stress, your smoking, alcohol, as well as your diet choices. Now, our body can cope with some free radicals, but too much can cause irreversible damage to our body. Now, these antioxidants are found in certain foods and may prevent some of the damage caused by these free radicals by neutralizing them. So some of the nutrient antioxidants found in carbohydrate-rich foods are your vitamin A, which are found in your sweet potatoes uh, and milk, your vitamin C, mainly of your fruits and many of your fruits, such as your oranges, your kiwi fruits, your strawberries, just to name a few, as well as your vitamin E and selenium, which are found in your whole grains. You've also got your copper, which are found in milk, are all sources of healthy carbohydrate rich foods. Now a diet high in antioxidants uh, may reduce the risk of many health conditions, such as heart disease. This is because the free radicals can actually um, encourage our bad cholesterol to stick to the wall of our blood vessels, which isn't ideal, especially as we mentioned earlier, that when we have diabetes, we have a higher chance of developing heart problems. So we obviously want to reduce the buildup of cholesterol. So overall, these antioxidants scavenge three radicals from the body cells and prevent or reduce the damage caused by an oxidation. Along with the benefits of good fats, your vitamins, your minerals, your fiber, and your antioxidants we just talked about, some carbohydrate rich foods can also contain phytonutrients which are naturally occurring compounds found in plant foods, such as your fruits, your vegetables, whole grains, and in many spices. They offer range of functional benefits, such as anti-inflammatory, immune support, as well as regulate your hormones. Now, they are different to the vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients, uh, such as you know, the protein, the fats, and the carbohydrates that we spoke about earlier. Many of these phytonutrients also give food their the actual color as well as smell. Now, phytonutrients are compound in plant foods. Some of these phytonutrients are found in carbohydrate-rich foods, such as your lutein, which are found in carbohydrate rich foods such as your kiwi fruit, uh, corn, which has been linked to lower incidence of eye lens degeneration and associated vision loss as our age increase. There's also the beta carotene, which are generally found in say your mangoes, your sweet potatoes, not only actually enhance the function of the immune system, promote healing of wounds, but also protect the surface of the eye, also known as cornea, to keep them moist um, and healthy, and also improve um, night and peripheral visions as well. So these are only just two of the phytonutrients. There are also many, many out there as well. So we're now going to delve into more details about carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates take 
two forms. Namely, you've got the starches and you've also got the sugars. Now, the sugars are then further broken down into your um, natural sugar as well as your added sugars. Now, starches are long chains of sugar glucose joined together. Starches occur naturally in a large range of foods, including your nutrient-rich foods like your starchy vegetables, such as your potato, your sweet potato, your corn, as well as your legumes, cracked wheat, brown rice, pearl barley, quinoa, and oats. Now, starch will increase your blood glucose levels. Now, on the other hand, you've got the natural sugar, and they generally come in two forms. We've got the fructose, which are found in fruits and fruit juice. Now, however, in fruit juice, it is a concentrated form of natural sugar. So it isn't recommended to have them too regularly or in large amounts. We've also got the other natural sugar, lactose, which are generally found in your milk as well as your yogurt. Now, these are often associated with nutrients. So, for example, you've got the fruit uh, with fibre, you've got the milk with calcium. Now, even though it is natural sugar, it will still increase your blood glucose levels, um, but often at a slower rate uh, than compared to, say, your added sugars. So, last but not least, with the added sugar, um, it can come in different forms, such as your white sugar, your caster sugar, barley malt extract, rice malt syrup, uh, you've got inverted uh, sugar, maltodextrin, just to name a few. Now these are rarely associated with nutrients, such as your cakes, your biscuits, your ice cream, your soft drink and pastries, which are all processed foods. Now generally small amounts are acceptable, um, but because these foods are also high in fat and salt, if eaten in large quantities, can actually affect your weight. Like those of starch and natural sugar, these added sugars will also increase your blood glucose levels, but at a faster rate. So this is the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating, which shows the five core food groups needed in a healthy diet, and it shows the relative proportion to achieve the optimal balance of nutrient, vitamins, and minerals. In the yellow section, which as you can see on the left-hand side here, you have your grains and your cereals. In the dark green section here on your right, you've got your vegetables. In the light green section here, you've got all your fruits, purple section down the bottom here, you've got all your dairy or dairy alternative. And then you've got your blue section here, which is all your meat and also meat alternatives. You will also notice on the small section on the bottom right here of the diagram, these are all your sometimes foods, which include say your cakes, your biscuits, your soft drink, your alcohol, your ice cream, chips, your pies, your burgers, even your ham, as well as your sausages, which many people actually think of this as a source of protein. And they actually think they fall into the blue section category here, which is what we previously mentioned as the meat or meat alternative, which isn't actually true because these processed meat actually contains high amount of bad fats as well as salt, which isn't good for your blood pressure. So all of these foods are, are okay if you have them in small amounts and only occasionally. Now on the top right corner here, it is also suggested to drink plenty of water. Um, and then down the bottom left corner here, you will also notice oils. They are suggested to be used in smaller amounts as well. So the aim is to choose foods that are based within the circle here. Now let's have a look at where are the carbohydrates based on the same Australian Guide to Healthy Eating diagram you saw in the previous slide. First of all, all your grains and cereals section are actually carbohydrates. As you can see, they've all been highlighted here. You've also got in your dark green uh, vegetable section here, 
mainly your starchy vegetables that uh, are your carbohydrate rich foods such as your um, legumes your potato your sweet potato as well as your corn in the light green section here are all your fruits Pretty much all of your fruits are classified as carbohydrate. Um, some of them may have less carbohydrates in them, and that may include your berries, such as your strawberries, your raspberries, as well as your blackberries. Now in your blue section, which is your meat and meat alternative, mainly carbohydrate rich foods are your legumes, as well as your nuts, if you have more than a cup, um, they're generally classified as carbohydrate rich foods. And then finally, you've got the purple section here, which is your dairy and your dairy alternative. Mainly your milk, your yogurt, um, your soy milk are your carbohydrate rich foods. And in the bottom right hand corner here, in the sometimes foods, as you can see, majority are actually carbohydrates. So such as your cakes, your biscuits, your chocolate, your crackers, your pastries, your juice, your soft drink, as well as your cordial. Now, as, I, as we were talking about previously, these are the foods that we have been referring to as less healthy carbohydrates that are often highly processed and also added sugar. So as you can see, Carbohydrate rich foods can be found in every food group. If you are to eliminate the carbohydrate in your diet, you not only eliminate a lot of the nutrients such as the fiber, the vitamin, minerals and antioxidants, but you're probably left with not a lot of food options to choose from apart from your meat as well as some non-starchy vegetables. So here is a list of the carbohydrate foods. Um, so from the grains uh, and cereal section, you've got the bread, the pasta, the rice, the breakfast cereal, the couscous, quinoa, as well as the barley. You've also got the starchy vegetables, things like, as I mentioned before, your potato, your sweet potato, your corn, your yams, your parsnips. In your legumes, you've got your lentils, your chickpeas, your beans. With your fruits, pretty much all your fresh, your frozen, your dried, your tinned, as well as your fruit juice. Um, and in your dairy, you've also got your milk and your yogurt. Sugar-based products, things like your table sugar, your jam, your honey, and also your syrup. And then your discretionary foods, or also what we know as the sometimes food groups, are things like your biscuits, your pastries, your cake, your chocolate, your confectionery, soft drinks, uh, potato chips, uh, crackers, ice cream, as well as your custard, just to name a few. So this here shows us the carbohydrate-free foods. So first of all, you've got the non-starchy vegetables. So things like your um, pumpkin, your carrot, your peas, your green vegetables, as well as your salad. Now, I think it is important to understand that some of these carbohydrate-free foods that I just mentioned still contain some carbohydrates, but not enough to actually impact on your blood glucose levels unless you actually have a large amount of them. Now, when we are considering what are carbohydrate-rich foods, we are actually considering ones that actually have a considerable, considerable amount of carbohydrate in it that will actually affect your blood glucose levels. So for example, pumpkin. A cup of cubed pumpkin has about 10 grams of carbohydrate. But for many people, you might only have one or two pieces of it along with other vegetables in your meal. So with that amount you eat, the effect on your blood glucose levels may be minimal. However, I have heard that other people say if they have pumpkin soup, for example, it may affect their blood glucose levels more. This is probably because we often add a fair bit of pumpkin in to make the pumpkin soup. Um, so it is more concentrated. And you might also have a larger amount of it too. So it is fair to say the same amount of carbohydrate rich foods may have different effects uh, between individuals. So it is also a good idea to find out for yourself by finger prick checking your readings. 
Now, the other thing is also your meat and meat alternatives, such as your red meat, your chicken, your, pro, uh, your pork, your fish, as well as your eggs, which are high in protein and they generally will not affect your blood glucose levels. You've also got your fats, such as your oils, your butter, your margarine, your cream cheese. Although they don't affect your blood glucose levels, um, they can affect your weight if you have too much and ultimately then therefore can affect your diabetes management. You've also got your nuts here, which generally are carbohydrate-free foods. However, if you have more than a cup, it does tend to have enough to actually affect your blood glucose levels. Now, some fruits, generally these fruits are more acidic. So things like your lemon, your lime, your passion fruit, your rhubarb and your strawberries. Now, strawberries are listed on there because if you are only having a few, so for example, like three or four, then carbohydrates are actually minimal. Generally, you know, for say a 250 gram punnet of strawberry, it will have about 10 gram of carbohydrates in it. Um, so just to give you a comparison, generally a slice of bread will give you about 15 grams of carbohydrate. Now, the other carbohydrate-free foods, you've also got your flavour enhancers, such as your mustard, your vinegar, your garlic, um, soy sauce, herbs and spices, as well as some fluids, so things like your water, your coffee and tea, obviously, without the milk and sugar, and also your diet soft drink and also your diet cordial. Now, although carbohydrates are an essential part of a healthy diet, and it does provide many important nutrients, still, as you can see by now, not all carbohydrates are created equal. Here is an overview of how to make healthy carbohydrates work in a balanced diet. Emphasize fiber rich fruits and vegetables. Now aim for whole fruit, um, whole fresh frozen and canned fruit and vegetables without the added sugar. Be mindful of choosing fruit juice and dried food, fruits as they are more concentrated source of natural sugar and therefore can still spike your blood glucose levels if you have too much. The second thing is choose whole grains. Now, whole grains are better sources than refined grains due to the fiber and other important nutrients such as your vitamin B. They are also less refined, meaning they're less processed. Now, the third one is choose whole foods rather than processed. Um, these foods uh, generally contain fiber, which helps to slow digestion and therefore minimize the fluctuation on your blood glucose levels. These can include your whole grains, your legumes, yeah, your fresh fruit, vegetables, and low fat dairy, and also your dairy alternatives. And last but not least, limiting your added sugar. Now, added sugar probably isn't harmful in small amounts. However, there is really no health advantage to consuming any amounts of added sugar. Plus, they can not only spike your blood glucose levels, but in large quantities can actually affect your weight and ultimately your diabetes management. So if you would like more information and are interested to look further into what kind of information fact sheets we have, feel free to go onto the NDSS website and check that out. And before we finish off, just thought I would let you know, for those who are interested in knowing more about carbohydrates in a little bit more detail, we've got this three hour group education workshop called Carb Smart, which is funded by the NDSS and at no cost to you. It covers topics such as practical information about foods and diabetes, choosing quality carbohydrates, um, knowing your daily carbohydrate needs, as well as how carbohydrates actually impact your blood glucose levels. And so I guess it would be a really good opportunity if you have any concerns um, about your carbohydrates and also your diabetes, to come along to the group education session and speak to one of our facilitators. I'm sure you'll learn more about the carbohydrates. Now, to find out more, either go on to the website or give us a call on NDSS on 1-800-637-700.
Well, thank you all so much for tuning in in the last 30 minutes to learn more about carbohydrates, what you need to know. I hope you've taken some key messages home and that these key messages will help you better look after your diabetes. So I hope you all stay safe and well, and we'll see you next time.